Right, I thought I'd load up Zima website and have a look and see what's on it. It's very, very complex site. And uh, it's laid out in a really weird way. It, it's took me a while to get my head around it all, and how it all works. And yeah, there's a lot to it. There's so many different types of decoders and they all work in slightly different ways and they're all factory one, preloaded decoders from different manufacturers. There's loads. So that's the main page. So when you go on the main page, I want to do a sound update on one of my locos just to try it out as an experiment on a Zemo chip. So I've got sound and update and then it drops down a file and then, hang on, let's go. Yeah, it drops down a drop down file. You go to all, there's all the different decoders, loads of different types. I want the Zemo sound database. Click on that and you get hundreds of sound files. Some of them are free. In fact, a lot of them are free. The blue ones are coded. The ones that say coded means that you need a code to unlock the sound file once you install it. And you unlock it on the selecting the CV address and then putting in the code and it unlocks sound file to use quite clever probably small shops and small businesses businesses that have done it or people that just want to make money out of the uh, effort of making up a sound file etc and then you've got the preloaded ones where the preloaded ones are red and they're manufacturers specialist uh, sound files that have been uh, done for certain manufacturers and you probably have to get a link to this to the manufacturer who made it and unlock it that way it's all very very strange how it all works so anyway i'm going to select you can select whatever country you want different collections anyway so i'm going to select i've selected european locos and i'm going to try and select a vectron so i can see a vectron there so there's a little uh, sort of green x on this side here on the left hand side is a green X, like a first aid green X. Press on that and it drops down a menu. Un information about a loco and everything. And then if you drop down, there's another menu. There's multiple menus inside menus. So you select which one you want. There's two of these are coded and one of them's a uh, 16 bit. So I don't th so there's there's mixed ones here, there's free ones and there's coded ones. The 16 bit sound ones free. I don't want that. So I'm just gonna drop down to the one below it. There's another one below it, so I'll press on that. Gives you all the information again. It'll take you to Wikipedia as well if you want more information on the local. It's really good how it's done actually. So you can see that, and then I want to go into a standard Zemo decoder and then click down another sub menu and it gives you loads of multiple choices there as well to do. It's quite involving. So I'm going to pull down Taurus Zemo. Let's have a look. There it is, Taras Roco. Um, that's for the Taras Roco class. Updated in 2008, so you click on that and it just downloads the file really quick. And then uh, Taurus 2, there's loads of different ones. Taurus 2. Let's have a look at that one. Railjet in the blue livery. That's quite nice. Click down on that. 4 megabytes. Uh, you've got a standard one. And a 16-bit uh, one. I might download that one there. Have a go at that one. Download that. There we go, Taurus 2. 
slightly different file. Anyway, so once you've done that, you're downloading it into the download file on your laptop or computer or whatever it is. And then I'm going to go into... Uh, let's go into Zemo. Hang on, wait a minute. So let's close this down. Close that down. And I'm already in the Z21 maintenance tool. So I'm going to log off my internet now and then log back onto the Z21 router and then see if I can upload this sound file. Right, so I'm going to take this local out of storage and this has got the Zemo factory chip in there. And uh, take this out of storage. This has had all the detail fitted to the uh, loco. So what I've done with this, I've ditched the top plastic thing that you get from the factory because that's completely useless once you put the detail on and then I've cut the box slightly bigger around the cap ends at both ends so you can get the loco out without causing any damage so let's lift this out very carefully and you can see it's got all the handrails on at both ends you don't want that to get damaged so anyway I'm going to put this on the test track now right so I've got the Taurus with the Zemo chip on the test track and the test track's got to be really clean all the rails on it good connection that's a Z21 programming cables connected to the test track programming track I've swapped over the internet from the internet connection on my main hub and I've logged it onto uh, the uh, loco one which is down here below that's logged on so what I'll do I'll just refresh refresh this double click on the Z21 maintenance tool open that up connect so that's connected and then I'm going to go Decoder, update, click on that, open file, select the file I want to update, which is that one, click on that, um, I'm not sure if you've got to unzip it, yeah that works good, and then what I'm going to do now is update, press the update button, Press yes. So now it's updating. Ah, now you've got to, It's saying now do I want to unlock the decoder because the decoder is locked. You've got to unlock it by selecting CV144 equals 128. You've got to set that to zero. And it's saying do I want to unlock the decoder and restart. I'm going to go yes. So now it's unlocking the decoder because it's locked from the factory. And it should do the update now. Yeah, so you can see it elapsed time. It's got a really long bar. I think there's a quicker way of doing this. I think this is going to take about 10 minutes. Uh, estimated time 24 minutes but there is a quicker t quicker way of doing it by selecting certain settings so I've got to wait for that bar to fill up but it is like you say it is doing it it's uh, uploading the sound never thought I'd actually ever be able to do this because I was like I say I was gonna I was gonna buy the old uh, programmer where you've got to upload it from the website, which I've shown before, onto a flash memory stick and upload it onto your programming track where you don't need a computer. But this is already, uh, all this software is already built into the Z21 and it's like a collaboration with uh, Zemo because they put a lot of decoders into the, uh, in fact, they put, I think, all the decoders that are factory uh, fitted. Zemo. Also when you're doing this you've got to make sure 
Like you've got plenty of battery on the laptop or your tablet, whatever you're using. Because <clears throat> if the battery fails when you're doing this, it could uh, possibly wreck wreck the chip. But I know there's built-in safety features on the Zemo chips anyway. So, yeah, that's another thing to bear in mind. Right, so in the end, to program the Zemo chip, I had to take the chip out of Loco and put it in a decoder tester. So making sure all the pins are firmly connected. And then screw the wires from the Z21 programming track onto, uh, onto the decoder tester, whichever one, I think it was that one I was using, yeah, that's the one I was connected to. Um, and then make sure all the terminals are tight. Because on this programming software, on the Zemo, I found that it's got to have a really, really good connection. If you've got a local on a uh, programming track, the track's got to be immaculate to make sure the connections are really, really good. And make sure all the firmware is up to date on the Z21 otherwise it it may just crash and not do it properly because I had a lot of attempts at trying to do it up, updating the software and eventually anyway I, I, it worked but it's now because at one point when it crashed the chip was rendered uh, useless because I had no the sound file uh, I had to abort it halfway through quite a lot of times anyway it reflashed the memory on the chip and eventually updated the, the original towers file back onto it and it works I've tested it on this decoder tester so now I'm going to take this chip off put it back into the uh, towers loco and it's uh, done but I think the proper true way to do it is to get the proper decoder tester from Zemo the firmware updater and the decoder sound updater I think that's the proper way to do it and even then, I think it's uh, quite fiddly. Not as easy as the ESU uh, system. But anyway, let's get that decoder off. You've got to make sure you don't bend any pins on, on the chip as well. That's a Plux 22 from about... It's over 10 years old, I think that. It's uh, still a good chip, but it's old... Old... Um, sound, 8-bit sound on it. But it still sounds really good. So anyway, I've refreshed that chip and I'm going to put it back on the logo. Right, so it's all back online, this logo. Chip's installed. The chip was uh, reprogrammed and it failed about eight times programming the uh, chip up about three quarters of the way through doing it. And had to, it sort of bail out of doing the, you know, the um, not the firmware update, the... Uh, the sound update but it reflashed a chip every time you were uh, trying to reload another sound file like it wipes the, the flash memory clean again so there's no uh, disruptions if it does work out which it did on about the eighth I think it's made for an eighth or ninth attempt it worked but what I had to do was take the decoder out as I said and put it on the decoder tester I actually upgraded this as well, I think that's important. But you've got to have really clean tracks and contacts on the loco and wheels if you're doing the, the sound update with the chip inside a loco. Because this loco, it's, a, it's about 12 years old and it's had absolutely tons of use. It's, it's, I've been using it for years and years on automation. So you have dirty contacts and things that are not quite right. So when you're trying to do a sound, um, upload inside the loco is a chance a possibility that might have been the other reason why it was uh, wasn't working wasn't uploading but anyway it's all sorted now all done in fact i'll just uh i mean for an 8-bit sound that's about 12 years old, I think it's about 12, 13 years old, this loco. It's absolutely brilliant. Brilliant sound on it.
sort of rock solid loco as well. Beautiful loco. But anyway, I'm going to stop the video here now. Put that. Let's break that. That's all done. I actually adjusted the sound threshold uh, on the brakes and the random random sounds put those to zero again on the Zemo chip. But what's good about the Z21 is you can adjust a lot of settings on uh, Zemo chips anyway, on the base, basic controls, basic CVs and sound adjustments. You can do it all on the Z21, which is good. But anything advanced, um, you really need to get all the charts and look into the, uh, the mapping of the CVs and uh, open up the software on the computer with the original programmer, I think. A standalone programmer, maybe. I think that's the easiest way to do the firmware on the uh, the firmware and the sound updates is the easiest way on the on the Zemo standalone programmer. Well, that's another another world and another story. So I'm going to stop the video now, and thanks again for watching.